hundreds of thousands of people use a simple, powerful technique called the Sedona Method. The Sedona Method itself is one of the easiest, simplest, quickest ways to bring about very deep, powerful transformation. Really, the Sedona Method is really nothing short of the essential secret of the universe. It is a very, very powerful way to get yourself in the place where all of these things you've been carrying around for years and years really dissolve and don't matter. And the Sedona Method allows you a way to apply spirituality to your day-to-day -day life and in the moment to experience peace and to experience uh, qualities of integrity uh, without having to feel buffeted and overwhelmed by negative emotion. The Sedona Method is a simple powerful, elegant, easy to use, and easy to duplicate technique that shows you how to tap your natural ability to let go of any unwanted feeling in the moment. People from all walks of life have experienced amazing results using the Sedona method. Finally in the middle of the night I said to my husband, I said, you gotta take me to emergency, it's so bad. So I went to emergency and the doctor looked in my throat and he says, you have tonsillitis. I said, I, I didn't know. I had, um, my uh, tonsils were so swollen, there was like this much left in my throat, I could hardly swallow. And it had, um, it was all infected. He says, we have to give you heavy antibiotics, we have to give you um, morphine to, for the pain. I said, okay, thank you very much, give me some Tylenol 3s and I'm going to go home. I didn't realize how much anger I had around it. I was so mad that I was sick for three weeks and I was also really scared that I was never going to get rid of it. So I released the anger and I released the fear and I swear by the next day my throat unswelled and cleared up and I could swallow again and by the very next day I didn't even feel like I had tonsillitis anymore and I had the pain for three weeks Excellent. and totally got rid of it. Oh, I've experienced a lot more peace, a lot more being at ease. Uh, even my business life has gotten to be a lot more successful since I've taken the course and um, I really really enjoy it and I, I can't imagine going through life anymore without it. A job that paid me the kind of income that I never thought was possible without really having to go out and look for it. It's more as if the job came to me rather than I had to go find the job. And that to me is a real miracle just by using the simple techniques and tools taught by the Sedona Method. It's just such a ready tool. It's beautifully subtle and very powerful. I could feel energy and things moving. That I feel much more free inside. Jack Canfield co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, and his family used the Sedona Method. And Hale and I met at a friend of ours house, Gay and Kathleen Hendricks. Some of you may know their work in the couple's work and breathing and centering and so forth. And he was there to do a little preview of his program he does called the Sedona Method. And I was just Blown away is probably the wrong word because it's like blown away is like explosive and this is more like Ew. And so I ended up taking his seminar with my wife and my 13 year old son Deepak Chopra had was it his 50th birthday or 60th? 60th birthday we think anyway Hale was invited and I was invited and Mark Victor Hansen was invited and Susan and Ariel Ford and Brian Tracy, pretty much anybody who was anybody in the human potential movement on the West Coast. We we're all looking forward to it because you're going to get to see each other, you know, which we don't always get to do. And then all of a sudden, I came down that previous night with the worst flu I think I've ever had. And I was just like that, you know, the runny nose thing, nothing you could do would stop it. And so my wife went off with some other people to go to this thing, and I'm sitting at home in my office kind of feeling sorry for myself, but working because I was bored. And I get this phone call on a cell phone with a rock band in the background, and it's hail. And he says, so you got a cold or a flu? I said, yeah. He says, you want to release it? <laughs> I said, you can do that? He said, yeah. I said, OK. So here he is like on his cell phone in the hall with his rock band in the background. He's going, so could you welcome it as best you could? <laughs> <laughs> Could you let it go? Would you let it go? When? Well, in about seven minutes, my nose was totally dry. I was totally without any kind of what I would call symptomatic experience. And that's how powerful this work is. You can pretty much release anything. Did you ever see a young child fall down and then look around to see if they need to be upset? 
<laughs> I was, I, I remember, I was pretty young the first time I saw that. Was, That's odd. <laughs> They're deciding whether to be upset here. <laughs> and often, if they don't catch anybody's eye, no upset. None. They just let it go. Same fall, catch somebody's eye. <laughs> Daddy, kiss it. But then again, one kiss. What's the problem? <laughs> they just let it go again. Or they'll have a knockdown, drag out fight with the, their parents or, or, or a sibling or a peer. And I'm, they'll say, I'm never going to talk to you again. And five minutes later, they're busy playing like it never happened. Well, we all come in with this natural ability to let go. And what happens is we get trained out of it inadvertently by adults. So for the sake of this analogy, this pen represents our unwanted emotions, our, our apathy, our fear, our grief, our anger, our stress, our tension, what, whatever unwanted emotions you have. And your hand represents your gut or your awareness. Now take this object and grip it really tightly with your hand. Now if you did this long enough, it would start to feel really uncomfortable and then really familiar. Because this is what we're doing all the time with our emotions. But that's enough gripping. <laughs> now just roll the object around in your hand. Now is this object attached to your hand? No, obviously not. But has it ever felt that way with an emotion? Uh-huh. <laughs> it's so common, in fact, it's even in our language. We don't usually say, I feel sad. What do we say? Right. Or uh, you don't usually say, I feel angry. You say, I am. Exactly. I am the emotion. And because we, uh, we say that to ourselves so much, we begin to believe it. But every emotion that you have, again, no matter how good a story you made up about why you feel it, is as attached to you as this pen is attached to your hand. Now, t close your hand lightly around the object, turn your hand upside down, and just drop it. Okay, that's how easy it is to let go of any unwanted feeling. I can't imagine what my life this year would have been like without the Sedona Method. Um, after being diagnosed with cancer this spring, um, I found that the Sedona Method was the perfect way for me to deal with that situation. Um, I was able to reach a place of calmness and centeredness throughout my treatment. Um, and to embrace the fact that by dealing with the emotions that helped cause my cancer, that I don't have to worry about it coming back. And even though I still have another month of treatment left, I can go into that joyfully, knowing that it's exactly what I need to experience at this time. Lester Levinson, a physicist engineer, inspired the Sedona Method to help others uncover their own freedom. I just started the method uh, one year ago when my husband uh, of now 29 years announced to me that he wanted to be by himself and, and be on his own. And I went into a pretty good state of depression and, and denial and just complete fear, not knowing where I was going to go with my life, myself. And even though I'm a professional and I have a job, I was... I was in a complete state of fear. And one of the things that, that Lester talked about earlier on in his path to freedom was that, that he, he could see that, that real love would come from being able to envision the woman that he loved in the arms of another man. And my initial response to this was, yeah, right, okay, this, this seems totally unrealistic to me. And so I, I pictured my, my ex-husband in this situation where I envisioned him in the arms of a much younger woman, which is of course a very big thing for a lot of middle-aged women <laughs> to, to be having charge on. And I brought this picture into my mind and I saw him with this woman and loving her and being in love with her and I was very happy to see him be in this position in his life, to, to be very happy and in love. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. And so now all of the emails that I, that I share with my ex are, carry very, very little charge. And there's a lot more love 
and I'm, I'm still loving myself and taking care of myself most definitely, but it's coming from a very different position now. We have all these coping strategies with our emotions. Rather than just let them go, one of the things we'll do is we'll pretend they're not there. We'll, we'll just go completely into denial. Uh, and, or we'll take our attention off it long enough so we can push it back down. And one of the ways we'll do that, we'll do that through, through drugs, through alcohol, through uh, uncontrolled sex, even through exercise sometimes. Because all these things temporarily make us feel better or take our attention, uh, or movie, uh, movies and television too, big. Uh, in fact, a lot of our country is based around escaping our emotions. There's whole industries based around it. And then on the other end of the spectrum, if we're angry, we'll yell. If we're sad, we'll cry. Now that feels better, and a lot of people think that's a release, but it's not. It's healthy, it's useful, it's part of good therapy, and, uh, and, it, and it feels often better, but it's not always appropriate. You're not gonna yell and scream and cry and carry on at work, for instance, but you may, have, you may feel like you want to. <laughs> uh, and also, if you're not communicating in relationships, you can't have a healthy relationship. But the balancing point, as I said earlier, between the, these two is letting go. And so that's something you can do at work when, when your boss is saying something that's making your skin crawl. Or, or you can do it in the car when you've been cut off by traffic. You can do it um, in, the, in the middle of any kind of a, a business negotiation where it's not going your way, or it is, and you know you're, you might open your mouth and insert foot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so it, then it becomes something you can use in any situation to calm yourself, to let go of the apathy, the fear, the grief, the anger, and the pride, all the feelings that are gumming you up inside and preventing you from just feeling the way you want to feel and performing at your best. Releasing emotions can have major benefits in life. I had a family member who had promised me some money um, about 25, 30 years ago. And um, it, they never paid me. And I had long since thought that, you know, there was, I, I didn't even care if I received the money anymore because I just knew it wasn't going to happen. I just, that was my feeling. Oh, I really felt the shift when I let go of this, um, oh, probably anger, um, betrayal, you know, someone promised me something, it wasn't fair, they didn't do it. And I really felt a shift that, so what, you know, it's okay. And within a week, I received a check. And it was for that amount from this person. And it was a big, it was a lot of money, at least to me. And I looked at the check, and it had been written a day after I had done that release. So it truly made me a believer. One of the things that I've discovered is universal, not, in, not only in myself, but in everyone I've ever worked with, and anyone I've heard back who's done this process, is that arc at our core, we're already whole, complete, and perfect. And there's this radiance, this peace, this joy, this love that's underlying even our most hateful emotions. Uh, and so when you let go, you naturally uncover that. You can see it in people's eyes. It starts to shine through. You can see it in their facial expressions. And it starts to manifest in their lives. What I find is that people can really start creating goodness in their lives when they realize that the source of goodness is inside, not out there. Find out how you can learn this simple, powerful technique.